starting off with back extensions, I found that these plus leg swings are a great way of warming up for heavy squats because back extensions, they help warm up my hamstrings, my glutes and my lower back. Whereas the leg swings, I feel as if they open up my hips. One thing to keep in mind is that I always walk to my gym and it's probably around a 10 to 15 minute power walk, which again helps open up my ankles and get the blood flowing. Because if you've ever woken up in the morning and your back feels a bit stiff, you don't want to jump into your top set of squats feeling that way because you are going to risk injury. These back extensions, they are an exercise in themselves where you can load them up if your body weight is too light by holding a plate or some dumbbells. But I like to use them as a warm-up exercise instead and focus on either RDLs or some form of hamstring curl and a hip thrust for the posterior chain. After the back extensions, I'll do lightweight squats, so my warm-up sets, to make sure that my knees and my CNS, so my nervous system, is ready to go for the top set. Because if you jump from a very light weight to a very heavy weight immediately, with no intermediate sets or weights in between that, that top set or top weight will feel a lot heavier because your nervous system isn't or hasn't adapted to heavier weights gradually, so it's more of a shock. This is my final rep on this weight, which is what I was aiming for since last leg day. Now, the form wasn't the best, and I did notice a bit of knee cave on the final couple reps when I was getting more fatigued. Now, I'm not sure if this is a detrimental amount of knee cave to the point of where I'm losing power in the squat, but I did decide to up the weight since I was feeling a bit stronger, and I think the most I've gotten two plates in a 15 is two reps or one rep. I don't remember exactly. But since I was fatigued from the previous set, I was only able to get one. But I do think I have two or three reps in my system, which I do think I'll be going for in my next leg day. Meaning I'm steadily approaching the three plates that is my main goal to rep by the end of the year. When doing these hamstring curls, I like to focus on trying to be as explosive as possible with the weight on the way up and then slow it on the way down. Now you can see a mistake I just made, which is raising my knees. And you don't want to be doing this at all when doing a lying hamstring curl, as well as raising your butt off the machine. You want to stay as planted as possible because this helps to completely isolate the hamstrings. At the end of the set, when I can't completely finish off a rep, I like to do two or three partial reps just to completely finish off my hamstrings. What's very interesting is the feeling of my legs after that hamstring curl is completely different to what I'm used to feeling after an RDL set. And it's that my leg almost feels weightless whenever I'm trying to curl it inwards. I almost have no power in doing it. And whenever I'm getting into the leg extension, I almost need to help guide my legs into the leg extension gap because my hamstrings don't have the energy in them to do it. And maybe that's because I wasn't doing enough volume in the RDLs and I was going heavier than I should have been in order to completely fatigue them. I hope this video helped. Make sure you like and subscribe and chat to you later.